Hello and a warm welcome back to my driveway on a really cold frosty morning. Today we're going to be looking at changing the thermostat on my Cavalier so we can actually get some heat into this car. Okay, so hopefully we'll try and make this a fairly quick video if we can. Um, this is one of them special clamp tools for uh, clamping this style of uh, hose clamp. first time I'm using one of these and that's uh, although it's only a cheap tool uh, it's already making it easier than using a pair of pliers which is what I used to do okay let's see if we can get that up a little bit more See, it's handy because it uh, sort of locks in place so you can keep it locked open. Okay, so I have uh, I've got a catch pan underneath here. The, the system is full of water still. Yes, the engine's been running, but it's not long enough to get any real heat into it. Let's see if we could twist this off without breaking the hose. The trick here is just to try and get it moving round and then you've got more chance of that actually coming off just like so. Now I've got to try and well, I have got a catch pan underneath there as I just said. Next up is this Jubilee clip, which is underneath there. Uh, let's see if I can find a right size socket. So I'm trying to make this a fairly short video today. Unlike my excessively, more excessive long ones. And what we got there. Oh, that's good doesn't even have a size on that one but this Jubilee clamp is also hand tight so that's always that's jolly good okay. let's see if we can get this Jubilee done so yeah as I was saying um, we were changing this out because uh, over the years I've had this car the heat output from the heater has been gradually getting worse and this year uh, I drove it up the motorway and it, it was just lukewarm water coming out of the vents which is not really ideal and not only that it takes ages to warm up in the mornings now um, other symptoms I'll be getting is obviously when you're sat in traffic temperature gauge comes up to sort of normal working temperature 
and uh, as soon as you start moving off it, it starts to drop drop off again which is all typical signs of a uh, of a failing thermostat. So let's try and get this clip undone. So annoyingly, my other camera decided to um, that it was going to die. So it missed a load of footage out of me taking the old thermostat off, which come off surprisingly without any issues. So uh, let's get my gloves on here. Um, I'm not too sure if and um, how much that's actually recorded until I charge it up later on. It's this damn cold weather. It's uh, I mean it went from 100% to 10% in a matter of a few minutes. The amount of time we've been watching probably. Um, so yeah, these are E10 sort of torques. These bolts come out absolutely fine. I thought these were going to be a pain, to be honest. On my Mark II Cavalier, they decided to shear off, so that was exciting. So this is the old crusty thermostat housing. Thankfully, the the thermostats themselves, you can't. Oh, well, it looks like you can actually change them. That looks like it will come out of there, actually. That does, doesn't it? Here's our new thermostat housing and a new rubber gasket. Now that looks like it might be a bit of a pain and probably won't stay where it is. That looks like it can easily be trapped. So what I'm going to use, I've got some silicon grease here. I'm just going to use a little bit of that around the ridge here and what that's going to do for us is hopefully just hold that in place now the reason why i'm using silicon grease as opposed to any other grease is silicon is very kind to rubber it doesn't eat it away like uh doesn't eat away like your standard um, grease would so we'll just stick that in there you can see now that's sit sticking and sitting in there quite nicely just grab a cloth and make sure we're all clean over here okay got some paper towel just give that a little bit of a a wipe it doesn't look too bad to be fair actually looks quite nice and clean just want to make sure that it's all free from any oil contaminants look at that that's the mating surface all nicely cleaned up okay let's see if I can keep my arms out of the way and uh, and show you this actually being fitted I suppose one thing's for sure at least with the uh, with the video ending like that it'll make this an incredibly short video so that's that there stuck in with the uh, silicon grease shouldn't affect anything um, internally i think there's quite a bit of silicon actually in um, in the coolant there in the antifreeze so just simply place our new housing on this is really going to be quite obvious um i'm not going to put anything on these i did think that i was going to put some you know copper grease or something like that on these bolts but because they come out so nicely I, I don't think it's going to be necessary and in theory this thermostat should outlast the car probably 
hopefully not, but you can see there's hardly any corrosion on these at all, nothing. It looks like they've got some kind of galvanised coating of some description on there. them started. Sorry if the audio has gone a bit squiffy on this one. Um, it's because I'm not using my external mic. I'm not having to use the cameras or the phone's internal mic. Simply because I don't have one of them stupid dongles that converts your charging port into a phone, into a, well, headphone port, microphone port. Thanks, Apple. Oh, because I've got because of this cool and there's so much silicon around the place it's making everything quite slippery so not to worry though see if we could get into a nice position The ratchet I'm using is um, it's one of them non-click type ones, which is supposed to be a bit better than the click type. At least you don't have to go round so far to get into the next groove, if that makes sense. And I just dropped. Now, I'm not really tightening these up to very tight just uh, enough to snug that rubber gasket that comes with it. There probably is a torque setting, but. Okay, that feels about right. They weren't very tight to begin with, which is good. Okay, so that's the big pipe that to go back on now. Try and move that. Uh, Jubilee clip so it's a bit more accessible. There we go, that's nice and tight. Tighten this one up while we're at it. too mad with it. it looks like it's got on going onto plastic there hasn't leaked okay uh, put our top pipe back on this is really quite a handy little tool this I sat back on there. Right, let's top the coolant up and um, and get this car running. So I've just got some uh, red coolant here. I'm just going to top the system back up. And try and not spill it everywhere. Just one and a half litres just there. Going 
down nice and slowly. Right, that's the, the cold level mark. Um, let's get this running and start bleeding the system. really must sort out that tensioner. That'll stop in a minute. So at the moment I've got the feet Peter on full. The fan is only set to number one. I'm going to keep an eye on our level there for a minute. Let everything warm up. And get the water circulated. Don't worry about the steam you can see there, that's some of the corners that I oh, put it down on the exhaust manifold down there. A little trick you can do is just squeeze the hose pipes. We do actually have a slight leak. around the engine into here you've got that a bit of a bypass there which goes back to the header tank that enables this to get fresh warm water all the time and that main thermostat there will open up as and when the water gets up to temperature and then allows the water to go through the radiator there
So I've just stopped the engine there for a minute. Um, I'm going to tidy up all my stuff. Then we're going to go for a quick drive. Okay, let's see if this shot even works. I've got you lashed up with all the seat belts in a minute, so let's see. seasick yet so I'm going to take this down the bypass um, nice fast road see how quick she gets up to temperature and more importantly hopefully keep her up to around 90 degrees and when we get back we'll check for leaks call this job a success even though the recording wasn't so the trip counter is on 87 miles at the moment so uh, we'll see how long it takes before we get up to temperature or how many miles at the moment it's looking pretty good the uh, the uh, temperature need always already coming up at a fairly decent rate as well as before it didn't uh, probably still be in the blue now and when it does start to rise it usually rises pretty slowly
so that was about a 15 mile drive. Um, yeah, the uh, temperature gauge went up and down a little bit as expected. Cabin in here is nice and warm. I've had it on high for a little while now just to make sure that the cooling gets circulated. I, I believe these are a blend or on, on the uh, Cavalier anyway rather than an actual valve. Some cars um, use a water valve. Um, they actually cut uh, the flow going to the heater matrix or reduce the flow, which is the reason why you have the heater on full because that will um, that just allows the water to circulate around the heat matrix and make sure you've got no air locks in there. <coughs> so uh, yeah, um, we'll go back home now, we'll switch this off, we'll have a nice cup of tea I think. And we'll also um, let the car cool down a little bit and then we'll recheck the coolant level. home again. Well, I've just immediately turned off the engine. All looks nice and dry around that joint there. As does, oh no, there's a little bit on the top of that thermostat housing. Might have to replace that clip. As far as I can see, water level looks good. Let it cool down and um, we'll have another look. Okay, so it's been a good half an hour now. Time to check this level. <clears throat> Looks okay. Looks like it's just, just very slightly below that mark there. So I'll give it a bit of a top up. I won't put too much in there. Pull it up to the line, just slightly below it. And the cold level is basically up to where this um, where this seam is on the on the bottle here. That'll probably come up a bit more when it's cold, or not, as the case may be. We'll check that in the morning, though. Uh, so yeah, sorry about the. Uh, the lack of uh, video at the beginning there. Um, that's the trouble with this cold weather and, um, and using old phones, I'm afraid, to, to record. So, um, yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again in another video.